Well, hi, well, welcome again to our journey into algebra and number theory. And we finished off in the last video by asking the question that when is this u sub n group going to be cyclic? And the way we're going to answer this eventually is we're going to see that we, we need to know a little bit more about some group theory. In particular, we want to decompose this u sub n into smaller bits. And we then glue together these smaller bits to get us back to un. And exactly what that means, we're going to have a look at now. So I'm going to introduce the notion of a direct product. So we consider this group u12. These are all the numbers that are relatively primed to 12 and less than 12, 1, 5, 7, 11. And this one has, um, well, I've got two subgroups. I've got A, which is 1 and 5. Now that's a subgroup because 5 squared is 1, not 12. And 1 and 11, 11 of course is the same as minus 1, so 11 squared is 1 modulo 12. So these are two subgroups. And we can take the Cartesian product of A and B, which we write as A cross B. And that of course is just a set of ordered pairs. So we take the ordered pairs, we take the first element from the first set. We take the second element from the second set. And so similarly, we take 5 and 1, 5 and 11, and um, we end up with 1 and 11 as well. And this gives us a set of ordered pairs. So this set can be given an operation corresponding to a multiplication of pairs of elements. That is, if we want to multiply two of these ordered pairs together, we're going to define that multiplication as multiply the first elements together, A times C, multiply the second elements together, and that gives me another ordered pair. And it's fairly clear that the Cartesian product then is closed under this operation. So let's just now make a definition of what we've been doing here. So we take A and B are two subgroups of G. We're going to define the direct product, which I'm going to write as A uh, with a cross with a circle around it, uh, this to be the Cartesian product of A and B. That was just A with a cross. The circle indicates here that it's actually got a group structure and it's got a multiplication rule. So uh, this is the direct product of A and B and the multiplication rule is, as we said before, to multiply two ordered pairs, multiply them um, coordinate wise. Of course, you can see that this, is going, this could be generalized to more than uh, two subgroups, which we'll be looking at later. So observe that this will form a group. Now, we need to just check that. Uh, if you take two, um, uh, one, uh, two elements of, of A, A1, A2, and sorry, since A1, A2 is in A, and B1, B2 is in B, so this ordered pair is in the uh, Cartesian of the direct product. The identity, we take the identity out of A and the identity out of B, that'll, that'll be the identity in the direct product. And for the inverse, well, we simply take the inverse of each of the elements. And associativity is obvious. If we come back to our example above then, if we take the direct product of the two components, modulo 12, remember we had 1 and 5 and 1 and 11, uh, then we have 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 5 is 5. Um, if we do 7 times 5, then modulo 12, we get 11. And so when you multiply these out, and then 1 by 7 gives you 7, so when you do all those products, you end up exactly back with U12 again. In other words, um, this direct product A, direct product B, was in fact isomorphic to the original group G under this product map, um, taking A, comma B and mapping it to AB. So there's the isomorphism between the two groups. As another example, so basically at this stage what we've done in with group, group G is we've split it up into two, the product of two subgroups which we glue the two subgroups together by using this map. Now, the, um, another example here, we take U15, all the numbers relatively prime to 15, there they are, 
and I'm going to take two subgroups, um, A which is 1, 2, 4, 8. This is a cyclic group of order 4, generated by 2. 2, 2 is a 4, 4, 2 is a 8, 8, 2 is a 1, mod 16. And a second group, B, which is 1 and 4, because 4 squared is 1, mod 15. And so this is just a cyclic group of order 2, and these are two subgroups. If we take the product of the components here, well, what do we get? We get 1 times 1 is 1, uh, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 8 is 8. If I take 4 times 2, I still get 8. 4 4s are 1, and 8 4s are 32, which is 2. And so I simply get the set 1, 2, 4, and 8, which doesn't equal, this is not the same as U15. So in this case, the original group was not isomorphic to the direct product um, by this product component map. So, question then arises, how do we tell when a direct uh, product of two subgroups of a group G is in fact isomorphic to the original group? Turns out the answer is really lovely and very simple, and it's given by the following theorem. Uh, if we have two subgroups A and B of an abelian group, this only works for abelian groups, by the way, not in general, of an abelian group G, and the only thing that's common to both of these is the identity, and the size of A times the size of B is the size of G, then G is in fact isomorphic to the direct product of A and B via this product component map. So we saw what, what, what went wrong up here with this example is that the intersection of A and B it had a 1 in it all right, but it also had 4. Whereas in the example of the earlier example, the intersection of the two subgroups was just the identity. Little proof of this, um, which is not too hard to follow, I hope. So um, I'm going to let S be equal to, so I take the Cartesian product of A and B. And then I take the elements in the Cartesian product and I multiply them together. So this set S is just our usual component map. And I want to show, of course, that S is equal to G. Now we know that S is a subset of G. So I only need to check that the size of S equals the size of G. That is, all of these products are in fact distinct. Well, suppose they're not. So I suppose we've got an A1, B1 is an A2, B2. Well, we're in a group, so I can pull that A2 on this side by multiplying by its inverse, and I can pull the B1 on the other side by multiplying by its inverse. And then I get this expression equals this one. But this element here belongs to A, and this element here belongs to B. But the only thing A and B have in common by our assumption up here was the identity. So that means each of these things has to equal identity and that immediately gives me A1 equals A2 and B1 equals B2. Now, th so that tells me that the size of S is equal to the size of A times the size of B and that's equal to G and that means this set S is in fact equal to G. Now, the, um, this mapping um, is uh, from the mapping AB to AB is a bijection then from A, from the direct product of A and B uh, to S, since the elements of S are distinct, and it preserves the structure again, because if we just multiply these out, so F of the product here gives me this expression, uh, f of this is just this. I can rearrange the order. This only works for abelian groups, of course, because you can't change the order in a general group, but in abelian group you can do this. And this is just f of a1, b1. This is f of a2, b2. So that tells me this map preserves the structure, and that tells me s then is a direct product b. And as I said before, this only works for abelian groups. Okay, a couple of examples. Um, we take A21, all the numbers that are relatively prime to 21 and less than 21, which are these. We can find some subgroups by trial and error. So I can take this one, which is generated by 2. 
So 1, 2, 2 is a 4, 2 is a 8, 2 is a 16, 2 is a 11, not 21, and 11, 2 is a 1. And B, which is just the subgroup 1, 20, that one's easy because 20 is minus 1, not 21. Now, this element, ha this set has got 6 elements, this has got 2, 6, 2 is a 12, and U21 has got 12 elements in it. The only thing in common between these two is the identity. So our theorem says that U21 then I can split up into the, pro the direct product of these two and that's isomorphic to C6. This is a cyclic group with six elements and a cyclic group with two elements. On the other hand, this one U5 has only three subgroups, 1, 1, 4, 1, 2, 4. So you can't non-trivially decompose this into a direct product of subgroups because these two have a common element of 4 and anything else would be just trivial. It'll just be U5 is this one direct product with this one, but that's trivial. So we said it was difficult to tell when two groups are isomorphic because the multiplication tables are too cumbersome and often too difficult to compare. Now we can use direct products to um, uh, we can use the direct product as a way of looking more clearly at this problem. So, for example, from the above, we saw that U21, we proved that was isomorphic to C6 cross C2. And U28, by a bit of trial and error, it's all it's got this little um, simple subgroup here. And this one here is generated by 5, so 5 squared is 25. 25 times 5 is 13, mod 28 times it by 5 is 9, mod 28 times 5 is 17, mod 28 and back to 1 again. So this is a cyclic group of order 6 as well, and this is a cyclic group of order 2. The order doesn't matter because we're dealing with abelian groups. So that tells me these are the same, and that tells me that U21 then is isomorphic to U28. So by factoring these U groups, uh, in this way, and we'll see how to do this more generally later, then we can find when these, we can show that these two groups are isomorphic to each other. Now that's part of the story with the U groups, and we'll come back and look at that later in more detail. We want to now repeat the whole process now additively on the modular groups, so the Zn under addition. And we're going to see in the next video, we have an analogous concept called a direct sum. And as you might imagine, the theory carries nicely across for direct sums, just as it did for the direct products.